know the devil is a deceiver, and he will deceive you, and he will deceive everybody that he can. But I want to talk to you tonight and show you how the devil, I'm going to the book, second chapter of Job tonight, and uh, read from uh, a few verses of this, but how the devil will come and deceive you. You know, it's, uh, it's easy to say, well, the devil can't deceive me. The devil's deceived me a lot of times. And I, I think, well, I, the devil can't deceive me. I know all of his tricks, and I know all this, and I know that. But I wasn't smart enough to figure him out. The devil's not, not some uh, uh, stupid uh, something that's crazy, but the devil knows how to work. And he knows how to work on our minds. And do you know that we're living in a world right now in uh, that is guided by money and sex. I know you say, well, Brother Walton, we don't need to talk. We need to talk about this. Amen. Because the devil is out to destroy and to kill and to cause everybody that can, he can take away the victory from it. I'm going to read from Job 2, uh, second chapter, and I'm going to begin reading at verse 1 and read uh, through a few verses. And the Bible says, And again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Now I want, want you all to think about that. The sons of God came to present himself. Satan also came to present himself. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence cometh thou? And Satan answered and said, answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord, and the Lord said unto Satan, Have thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in, in the earth, a perfect and upright man? One that fears God and assures evil, and still he holds fast his integrity, although thou move me against him to destroy him without a cause. Now, I want you all to think about that, that last verse that I read there. That thou move me against him without a cause. I, didn't have, I don't have any cause. The Lord said to move against Job, but I want to prove to you that I've got something in the world that's greater than, than you are. You may be seated. I want to talk to you just a minute. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that when the sons of God came to present themselves, that Satan also came and to present himself. Let me, let me tell you something tonight. You may think you're the only one here and that God is the only one here, but you remember there's another one here. Amen. And his name is Satan. Mm -hmm. And you know what he does? He comes in and the first thing the devil does is try to confuse your mind. Keep you from hearing the Word of God. And then when you hear the Word of God, he tries to stop it to keep it from getting down into your uh, heart and your soul and tries to keep you uh, discouraged. Praise the Lord. And when the devil comes to destroy, he comes and the first thing the devil does is begin to tell you what a great person you are to be treated the way you're being treated. That's the first time the devil will come. Tell you, oh, you're such a great person. Then, when you fall for his tricks, then he turns around and says, well, you hypocrite. Mm -hmm. What kind of a Christian are you? Hallelujah. You didn't know. Uh, don't you know that you're supposed to be above this? But look, you, 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 well, look what you've done. <laughs> See, Satan uses tricks. 
to cause you, the first thing he wants to do is build you up. Then he wants to drop you. Then when he gets you built up and he gets you dropped, then he wants to kick you a little further down. Yep. And then, there, now listen, here's another trick that he uses. As quick as he gets you to listen to him, the next thing that he will do is tell you, he will tell you, well, hallelujah, uh, you know, you didn't have anything to, begin with. to start with. You know, you know you're lost. You know you're not a Christian because that uh, uh, you fell for what that I offered you. Now just stay with me a minute. I'm going to bring a point out here in a minute. But better walls of never can't do that. If we go over into the fourth chapter of the book of Matthew, in the sixth verse of that, you'll find out the devil came to Jesus himself and said, If thou be the Son of God. The devil is meeting the Lord right here. Using, taking one of the best men and one of the wealthiest men that was in the East and trying to deceive him. Took his health away from him. Brought him down to where they, he had nothing. Took all of his children, took everything that he had. And then when he did, he sent his wife along. Hallelujah. Miss Job, you go over and tell, tell Job to just go ahead and curse God and die. Hallelujah. A perfect man, one that feared God, one, hallelujah, that had everything. You think the devil won't trick you? You think the devil won't come after you? You think the devil won't jump on your back? Hallelujah. If you think he won't, you better stop and you better turn around and you better think because I want you to know the devil don't want anybody he's already got. He wants them that he don't have and you're the one them that does something for the, for the Lord or the one the devil jumps on. Hallelujah. Don't ever think that the devil won't be there to baffle you. Hallelujah. See, see, Daniel, when he prayed, he said, uh, uh, the angel came to answer his prayer and said, I was baffled by the devil. He stopped the prince of the air. He stopped me out there. 21 days I've been out there fighting with the devil. You think that he, if he would uh, baffle him, he would stop him from moving? Don't you think he would take you and I? You know what we do? We sit by and let the devil take the church Hallelujah, and take the power and the anointing of God out of the church and the move of God out of the church. Hallelujah, instead of getting hold to God and saying, Devil, I'm not falling for your tricks. If thou be the Son of God. <laughs> Why, it's written that if you're the Son of God, that God can send, take charge of this thing, and He can send angels, you jump down off of there. Hallelujah, the highest part of the temple. You jump off of it and, uh, and the angel will give. Uh, they, they got charged. They can catch you and keep you from being hurt. Right. See, the devil used the Bible. The devil always uses the Bible to try to promote his ideals in people's hearts. Hallelujah. Satan, I think about how that the Bible says when Job had sat there and some of his wealthy friends, three of them, came over there at, and Job was sitting in ashes and pottery scratching the boils on him. And his friends came and they, they couldn't believe it was him. This rich man, this man that had everything, was sitting in ashes, scratching boils that was all over his body. Hallelujah. And you know what they've done? They went there to, to comfort him. Hallelujah. And when they went there, they saw something that they didn't expect. Now let me, let me tell you something. The devil will make everything look good and flowery and and all of that. Hey, you're not getting by when you don't do what the Word of God tells you to do. 
Hallelujah. Well, Brother Walsh, I can't do anything. You're, Brother Walsh, you're always talking about tithing. I can't do it. Wake up. Hallelujah. Wake up. You can't help from doing it if you listen to God. Praise the Lord. Oh, my. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. God will get everything that belongs to Him. Yeah. I want you all to know that. He'll come and He'll take away what you took from Him. Hallelujah. He'll take it away from you. There, there ain't nothing. Now listen to what now I want to tell you something. The devil, the devil said that what would a man give for his life, for it to be well. That, that's what he's saying. What would you give to be well? You take the last dime that you had or the last dollar you had or you sell whatever you had, hallelujah, and you would take it and you would give it to be well. Satan will rob you. Steal from you. Curse you. Laugh at you when you're in trouble. Let me, let me tell you something. A man went to prison for molesting a child. He said, well, I didn't think they'd send me to prison. I thought they'd just send me a house arrest or something like that. This is a smart man. Educated man. Don't you know, ain't you smarter than that? The devil told him, go on and do it, it's all right. You can go home, hallelujah, they'll lock you up in the house, they'll put a bracelet on your leg, and you can stay there, but the man is behind bars. Because he listened to the wrong voice. Satan came with a, to present himself. Whenever the, the sons of God came, you know what the devil was going to present himself with Brother Dan standing by him, Brother Lee standing by him, or Sister Ruby standing by him. He'd rather present himself as something great in the Lord. What about these, Brother Walsh? I, I can't, I don't, uh, uh, Joseph Prince, ain't that his name, that preacher that preached? That's one of them. That's one of them, one of them that preached. Just, he's building a church. <laughs> building a church in Singapore. Where it's at. Four hundred million dollars. Four hundred million dollars. You will see five thousand people in the main auditorium plus all the rooms to, for the overflow. Uh, you say, oh, but Brother Wallace, hallelujah. How many people will $400 million feed and clothe and take them out? You know what he said? We've had no problems with raising $400 million. It's been come in just by he don't like truck loans. I don't know where you realize how much money that is. That's a whole bunch of it. That's more money than I've got. <laughs> I'd hate to have to. I'd hate to have to scoop that four hundred million dollars up in pennies, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Come on now, Hallelujah! Listen, what are you saying, Brother Walsh? But they got people going to church. There are 5,000 people, but friends, are they hearing the truth of God? Yeah. Or right. is Satan sitting there telling them, all you got to do is take your dollars. Big dollars will perish with you. They'll burn up. Hallelujah. They'll burn up. They are all of these things that you and I are trying to hold on will perish. There ain't but one thing that's sure, and that's salvation. Amen. The power and the anointing of God's Holy Ghost. You can have the whole world.
world, if I gain the whole world and lose my soul, what will I give in exchange for it? There is nothing except the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The cross, it's all been paid for yes. on the cross. Satan comes along and said, but oh, but now, listen to these jerks that get up and say, well, you know, Jesus was a, he was married and hallelujah and uh, he was, uh, uh, you know, he, he uh, married a harlot. That's just being told from pulpits. Let me, let me tell you something. I don't care what the whole world tells you. They can name any name they want to, but there ain't but one name, and that's the name of Jesus Christ that will save you from dying and going to hell. You can play church all day long. And, but, and I'm going to tell you something. God has laid down laws, and if you don't meet them laws, you're going to go to prison, and that prison is going to be hell. You think Satan's going to tell you the truth when the Bible said he's a liar and the father of he the one that started him. He's the one that, hallelujah, I'm trying to wake up now. I want you to hear what I'm saying tonight. Amen. You cannot go to heaven and not abide by the word of God. Amen. The Bible, this is what the Bible says. All adulterers, fornicators, Murder. liars, hallelujah, and all murderers and all them, the Bible said, are going to have their part in the lake of fire. Yes. If you don't know how to repent, you need to learn how. Amen. If you don't know how to say, God, forgive me, I'm wrong. But I'm not wrong, but I'm, I'm smart. I, I'm, I'm, I'm smarter than most anybody else. Look out, dog food. <laughs> Hallelujah, the Bible said, Hallelujah, he that think of himself to be anything is nothing. Hallelujah, and a dog will eat nothing. Amen. Are you here? Amen. Don't blow you, don't puff yourself up and think that God don't have this is what the Bible said. The eye of the Lord is everywhere beholding good and evil. God knows every thought. Every thought that we have, God knows it. I'm going to take my time now because I want you to know that the devil, hallelujah, will set that on his shoulder. Let me sit down before I say this because some of you may fall out of the seat. <laughs> you know what happens? <clears throat> The saint, Satan will come along and make you think you're better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He'll make you think, well, I'm better than anybody else. Honey, you're already deceived. So that makes you worse than I am because I ain't deceived because I know what the Word of God says. So you're worse than I am already. Hallelujah. What are you saying, brother Walt? I'm saying the thing we need to do is not figure out how, how how much better than than we are than somebody else, but realize that we've got to measure ourselves not by man but by God. Right. Amen. Hallelujah! By the Spirit of the Holy Ghost of God. What's oh, quiet? Amen. Let me go ahead and preach this, and you get quiet. Hmm. When you and I listen to Satan. And we think that everything is going to be all right. Brother Walsh, if I had me a, a nice, big, nice car, or I had me a nice, big, nice home, hallelujah, or if I had this, or if I had that, stop just a minute. Did you listen to God when you when you wanted that, you could have had that if you would listen to God. But if you take what belongs to God, you'll live on Purpose Avenue the rest of your life. 
If you listen to the devil, he'll take the glory and the power of God out of your life and cause you to die and go to hell. He don't want you to serve the Lord. He don't care for you going to church. He don't care for you saying, I love Midway. Hallelujah. He don't care for you saying, I love Brother Walls. As long as you don't listen to him. Are you here? Amen. The devil don't care for you loving me. As long as you're turning deaf ear to what I say. Well, I'll tell you all something. I don't like your devil. I don't want nothing to do with the rascal. Nope. He caused me a lot of heartaches. A lot of sorrow. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The devil has robbed the whole nation. Hallelujah. And why has he robbed us? Because God could have healed us and we spent a fortune. Hallelujah. On medical bill we didn't have to spend if we would have listened to what God said and we would have listened to what God told us, we could have been healed by the power of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank Mike got quiet on that, did he? Yeah. You think it over when you get home. God wake them up at night and make them think over what I'm saying. The Lord. So Satan is ever worse. Mm -hmm. See the Bible now, let me go here and tell you something. The eye of the Lord is ever worse beholding good and evil. The sons of God came to present himself and the Satan came also to present himself. You think Satan ain't out there with his eyes open looking at you too? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. See, the thing that, that Satan don't want, now I'm going to cover just a little bit more of this. Satan does not want the church to be <coughs> spiritual. He wants everybody to be afraid to shout and afraid to sing and afraid to pray and afraid to testify of the great things that God's doing. He wants that kept out of the church. But that's what the church needs. Amen. Praise the Lord. If God does something good for you, you need to get up and tell it. Instead of saying, the devil has been after me all day, bless his sweet name. I'm going to tell you something. The devil ain't been after me all day. Yes. Hallelujah. Bless his ugly name. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost power of God. Hallelujah. Whenever the enemy raises up. Hallelujah. The Bible said I'll raise up a standard against him. We must believe that God will raise that standard up against that devil. That's trying to destroy us. Open your mind up. Listen to what God's saying. Thank you, Lord. Now, ain't God wonderful? Amen. amen. Ain't we a creep? Amen. Nobody said amen, did it? But listen. <laughs> somebody did, I heard. <laughs> I think I tricked somebody. But anyway, <laughs> how do you listen to me? Amen. Satan, Satan would enjoy it. Brother Mitchell, seeing you get out of this thing. You know why? Because God made you valuable. You don't realize, Brother Mitchell, you don't realize how valuable you are. God would like to stop that. But I do, I realize how valuable He is to this church. Hallelujah. Mike, you don't realize how valuable. God's made your hands to play music. Now you don't realize it. Because I know how close I've come to lose them one time. See, you just don't realize how valuable you are. What about God using you and how valuable every one of you? I just call these few out. But every one of you are valuable to <coughs> Sister Ruby, you don't realize. Sister Mitchell, you don't realize. Hallelujah. What a blessing you are when you get up here and sing. What a blessing that you bring to my heart and what a blessing you bring to other people's heart. And what a blessing you are, Sister Savior. You're a blessing. Hallelujah. When you sing unto the glory of God. Hallelujah. Use what God's given you. Amen. What's Satan going to tell you? 
He's going to tell you to make more money out there in the buyers. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. Stay out of them. They won't pay you. They may pay you. You think it's big money, but you may go back the next time. Hallelujah. And you you may owe you your bill. Hallelujah. may be bigger than your paycheck. Listen to me. I know a man, I know a family one time that worked in the mines. <coughs> I pastored them. They came to me and said to me, Brother Walsh, we owe the company store. That's when the mines had a company store. We owe the mines so much, such a big grocery bill that we can't pay our light bill. They're going to cut our lights off. Ooh. Hallelujah. We can't pay our light bill because they, we didn't get any check from the man because we owed the man stores so much money. I took out of my pocket. I had a family. I took out of my pocket and I counted them out the money to pay their their electric bill. <clears throat> now, listen to me. I said, let me talk to you all just a minute. Here's, here's what you gotta do. You gotta sit down and you gotta write out what you owe, what you can spend at the grocery store. And you're gonna have to sit down, you're gonna have to write all of this out. And you're going to have to put your budget. Hallelujah. If you're ever going to be above the water. Hallelujah. They said, well, we never thought about that. Brother Walsh, would you help us figure out a budget? I will. My wife and I sat down with this family. And we showed them how that we had to budget ours so we could pay our light bill. See, you got more to pay than groceries. you got more to feed than your belly. Either you have lights or you don't have it. Either you have water or you don't have it. Praise the Lord. But when we sat down and we wrote out everything and said, Hallelujah. Number one, Pay your tithes. They said, we can't pay, we can't pay our tithes. We... Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I paid mine, and I paid their light bill for probably two or three months. When they started paying their tithes, they learned they could pay their light bill. <coughs> now, y'all ain't going to like this, but I really don't care. I'm going to give you something that'll make you grow and you'll get out of the hole and you'll live for God. Hallelujah. And you'll have plenty to eat and you'll have plenty to wear and you'll have a car to drive and you'll have everything you need from God. But you ain't going to get it to your soul. Go out there in the field. Break up all the cornfield you want to. Disc it. Make it nice. Level. Take your... Drill out there and not put any corn in it and just run across the field and make tracks. And you're not going to have any corn. Till you sow something, you can't expect God to give you anything. Amen. Boy, it is quite now. That's true. Hallelujah. This is the truth. This is what you don't want to hear, but this is what you got to do. If you are a successful Christian, hallelujah, and a successful in working for the Lord, everything you try in the Lord will fail if you listen to the wrong one and you don't do what God tells them to do. And if Satan is going to be there to tell you, it's all right. They're going to tell you before you get out this door, Brother Walt don't know what he's talking about. Hallelujah. I'll tell you one thing. There's one thing I can tell you before God tonight. I don't owe God one dime. Amen. 
I paid every dime I ever owed to God since the day I come into the church and got saved. And God's blessed me. Amen. How's he doing? I want you to know that. I'm blessed. <laughs> I don't care where you be. You say, well, what are you mad at me? You want my money. I don't want nothing you've got, but I want you to give God what belongs to Him. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you here? Amen. Amen. You don't know nothing. You don't know nothing that you have a, that is not an increase. Hallelujah. I I I, I remember one one time, Brother Mitchell, when there was a person sitting in his house and said that that Brother Mitchell ought to pay tithes on. On the, on the cows and on everything that he had. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all, all of that, don't count no food out of them. Just get it all, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why, brother, brother Mitchell, if he'd done that, he could bring us a cow and we could just go ahead and eat it. Call it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on now. God don't expect you to give any more than the increase. I don't know why I'm preaching this way tonight, but I feel good anyway. Come on, man. I want you to know something. I'm not asking you to do anything that I don't do myself. Ask my children. Ask my kids. Ask the ones in those if I pay the tithes. If I'm faithful to it. Hallelujah. I guarantee you, God will bless you. Amen. He'll bless you. He'll bless you. Praise the Lord. Now let's get off of that and let's go a little further. I can see some of you done pale. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But let me tell you this. If you treated the, if you treated Uncle Sam like you treat God, you'd go to prison. Amen. <laughs> Brother Walsh. Listen to me. God wants you to give yourself to Him. Amen. God wants your ears. Well, why does He want on my ears? Satan tried to get... She tried to talk to Virgil tonight and Virgil acted like she wasn't talking to him until she called his hand. Then when she called his hand and pointed her finger over Virgil's ear. Oh, <laughs> I know the dog, little old poodle in his ears, hang down. Just all of a sudden my ear popped and I could hear. <laughs> <laughs> I know things are changing, I saw that. But that little old dog when he sitting up to the, when he goes sits down here at the table and he's expecting to get a piece of bread, you know what he does? He got ears about that long. He sticks him ears straight up. <laughs> Hallelujah. He ain't gonna eat with his ears, but he puts him ears up there where you don't where you don't drop some of that in here. I hope you perked them ears up tonight. Hallelujah. Boy, let me tell you something. Satan speaks, Virgil listen. But anyhow, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Think about it. Hallelujah. God wants our attention. Now let, let, me, let me say this to you. I can't always understand. I can hear as good as anybody, but I can't understand when I'm sitting here listening. But there's, there's one thing Hallelujah, that I do know. I don't have to understand. But I know when the Word of God is being taught, I can hear the Word of God. Amen. And I know what, when, when people are reading the Bible, I may not hear it, but I know words. Whenever they pull out the number, I know what, uh, uh, what, what they're reading from. You see, what, what's so important? Oh, brother, oh, brother Mitchell is asking for you on Sunday morning, lend me your ear. And let me use that ear to get down into your heart with the Word of God. Why? Why is, hallelujah, why is these things so important? 
A lot of people hear in the ear, but never go down into the heart. Amen. You can't, it, it, the Word of God ain't going to do you no good until it gets down in here. And you begin to believe the Word of God. You've got to believe what's being taught you. How many of you? How many of you believes that you're going to die one day? Yes, sir. Well, how come y'all don't believe it? If we don't go, if we don't go, we're right. right. That what I, I'm, I'm talking. If we don't, <laughs> I mean it. That way. But listen, to what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Why do you believe you're going to die? It's happening every day. You're seeing it happening every day. And the Word of God said, He that appointed unto man wants to die, and after this the judgment. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that, I believe that everybody in this house. Hallelujah. Well, Brother Walsh, are you going to die just like everybody else does? Here today, but gone tomorrow. Folks, listen to me. The devil may tell you you've got a thousand years to live. Hallelujah. He may tell you, well, you, you're going to outlive everybody. Honey, I will tell you something. When your number comes up, God's going to call you out of here Amen. and you're going to go. Ready or not, you're going. I want, to be, I want to take somebody with me, don't you? Praise the Lord. See, when I begin to think about all of our loved ones and all the people that's so precious to me, that I saw go out of this church. See them going to be with the Lord. It just breaks my heart. <coughs> but I can't quit. I have to go on. Over the next year, we will be home. But must we go must we go along? Or should we try to take somebody with us? I believe when I'm gone. I believe when I'm gone, it won't be it won't be many many years till Brother Walls will be forgotten. Hallelujah. But listen to me. Maybe I can leave something other that will cause your children to remember that I preached as much truth as I know. Because they're gonna have to die too. It don't make any difference. You can change everything. But I won't tell you something, church. The thing that bothers me about the singing today is they've taken the blood out of it. And it's, hallelujah, they say that bloody religion. I want you to know without the shedding of blood, there's no, no remission for sin. Amen. Hallelujah. It took, let me tell you all something. Some of our old friends that have gone on to be with Jesus. It took the blood to get them there. When Brother Walls, it took the blood to get me to where I'm at. It's going to take the blood to get me over that hallelujah on the other side. Number one is, listen to what I'm saying tonight. I'm not saying this to criticize nobody. I'm saying this to wake you up. Don't miss heaven and let the devil tell you that you can go without doing what the Word of God did. You've got to have the word of God. Right. What would you do, Brother Waltz? Would you call back people if you could today? No, no friend. I imagine they would rebuke me if they if I was to. I remember a lady that I prayed for that was raised from the dead. That lady came to me and said, Brother Waltz, how come you? To kill me, I can't go. She's real mad about it. And I said, she said I was in one of the most beautiful places. I had entered in 
to the one of the most beautiful places. And I heard you call my name, Sister Dowdy. You can't go. You've got to come back. I didn't say that at all. I prayed a prayer. God said, God, take death away from her and let her live and come back alive. And she come back alive after being dead for several, several minutes. I didn't call her name. I didn't call. I just called on the name of the Lord. You think Satan won't be there? Hallelujah. How many times have you been sick and down and you just didn't have a heart? feel like you could hardly raise your head up and Satan would be there trying to tell you, well, you might as well go ahead and die and get out of it. You ain't no good for nothing. Satan will tell you that, folks. Hallelujah. You may leave here. You may leave here and wish I hadn't preached this, but God gave me this and told me to preach it. So it's your, it was mine a few minutes ago now it's yours. What you gonna do with it? What you gonna do? Satan will be right there. Satan will be right there. The only way that you can keep Satan off of you is be sealed by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Grieve not the Holy Spirit whereby you are sealed. That keeps the devil away from it. Satan said, Hallelujah. Said, I can't get to Job. You've got to take the fence down. Hallelujah. The only way I can get to him, you take the hedge down from around him. My God, ain't that wonderful? Don't you don't you hope you can live in such a place that Satan has to ask permission to get to you? That's where I want to live. I don't care what the devil said. I want to live to where Satan has to say, can I get to him? And hear the Lord say, depart from me, devil. Hallelujah. Get out of here. Leave me alone. Get behind me, Satan. See, in the fourth chapter of Matthew, you'll find where the Lord said, Get behind me, Satan. Ain't God wonderful? Amen. Boy, he's been shouting. Nobody shouting tonight while I was preaching. That's okay. You take it home and think about it. Dream about it. Hallelujah. Wake up. Wake up. Be a Christian. Don't be a church member. Be a Christian. Amen. Church members are not going, but Christians are going. There's one thing about it. The devil can't keep a Christian out of heaven. Church members will be standing to begging to get in. But they're out of oil and their lives are gone out. God bless you for being here tonight. We're going to let you go home. Just take it.